Good day, everyone. Today we're going to take a look at word processing, Microsoft Word style. We're going to take a look at indenting, spacing, bullet points, numbering, views, and we're going to get a little help from our friends at Microsoft Word. All right, so make sure you get your notes in order. Make sure you follow the storm philosophy. Sit back and enjoy. So what are we going to learn today? You're going to get your learning on. You're going to learn all about indentation, spacing, bullet points and numbering, views, find and replace, and help. Now, one thing to note, you do not have to copy down every single thing here as far as commands and how-tos. Again, you're looking for an understanding on when and why you use them. The commands and the instructions, this will be something you can refer to on your own time. So don't worry about copying all of them down. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is indentation. Now this is when you take your Microsoft Word document and you take your paragraph and you take your text and you push some of the text in away from the border, from the margin. So this is what you can do to align your text, your paragraphs neatly. It depends on the task. Sometimes you want to make the first line indented. Now that's something that you'll look at for using when you are writing an essay. Other times you might want to change the indentation of an entire paragraph. Now this is something when you are quoting a large section of text, and you're obviously going to cite that of course, but you're going to indent the whole thing because it's a large section from another text. And in other times you're going to create a hanging indent. Now this is something you might want to look at for work cited. But in any case, for whatever you're going to do, you're going to need to know how to do this. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is first line indentation. When you're going to do this, you're going to select an entire paragraph. You're going to use the horizontal ruler, and if you don't see this, then please click the ruler under the view menu. And on the horizontal ruler, you're going to drag the first line indent marker to the position where you want the text to start. The first line indent marker is the top arrow in the set of arrows that you see in the ruler. If you don't want to drag the indent marker on the ruler, you can do it another way. And sometimes the indent marker is a little bit finicky and you can't really click on it and drag it. So another way to do this is to click on Format, Paragraph, under the Special in the indentation area, select First Line. You can select the other options however you want. And then you can click OK. This might be an easier, straightforward, direct way to do it that doesn't make it so difficult to select that little arrow and drag it and move it and everything because sometimes that can get finicky. If you want to change the indentation of an entire paragraph it's really simple. Select the entire paragraph by clicking, dragging, holding your mouse and highlighting the entire paragraph. On the formatting toolbar click the increase indent or decrease indent depending on how you want to indent your paragraph. The Word document will then increase the indent by one tab stop. This is half inches by default, so it will indent, if you're increasing it, away from the margin one half inch, or decreasing the indent by one half inch. And this will do the entire paragraph, which again makes it very quick and easy. If you want to create a hanging indent, no, this is not hangman. You want to select the entire paragraph again by highlighting it. If you don't see the horizontal ruler again, click on ruler and click on the view menu. On the horizontal ruler, drag the hanging indent marker. Now this is the bottom arrow of those set of arrows on the ruler. And you can drag it to the position at which you want the indentation to start. And the hanging indent is, is the text underneath your first line. Again, if the ruler and that hanging indent marker is a little bit too finicky, you can't really select it, you can do it another way. Again, go to Format and then Paragraph. Under the Special in the Indentation area, select Hanging. And then in the Buy box, set the amount of space for the hanging indent, so the amount of inches away from the margin. Next up is Spacing. Now when you open a Microsoft Word document, by default, all text is single space. To change the spacing, select your text. On the formatting toolbar, point to the line spacing icon. And then you can do one of the following. You can apply a new setting. Click the arrow and then select the number that you want. To apply the most recently used setting, click just the icon button. To set more precise measurements, click on the arrow click more and then select the options that you want under line spacing. Some other quick and easy to remember shortcuts. If you highlight your text and, 
and select your control key and one, that makes it single space. If you hold control and two, that will double space your document. And if you hold control five, that will make it 1.5 spacing. So some quick and easy shortcuts. Next up, bullets, points, and numbering. To add bullet points or numbering, click on the bullets or numbering icon in the standard toolbar. Type your text, and each time you hit enter, a new bullet or number will add into the line below it. So you'll create new bulleted or numbered points. To finish the list, press enter twice or press backspace, and that will delete the bullet or point or list. If you have already typed your document and then want to make bullet points or numbers, then you're going to highlight your document, highlight the text of your document, I should say, and then select the bullet points or numbering icon. If you want to change the style of your bullet points or numbering, select your list that you've already created in your document. Go to Format, then Bullets and Numbering. You can choose the bullet or numbering style from the list. Again, under bullet points, you have a number of options from check marks to squares to circles to all sorts of different ones. Or you can customize your list. And when you select customize in that bullet and numbering window, you can choose between a number of different font styles, characters, imported pictures even. And then when you're finished, click OK and click OK again, and that will exit you from the menu. In a lot of cases, this is great for making very themed type reports. And so instead of check marks, you might want to make Nike swooshes or Nike style swooshes. Right? So it makes it your report much more customizable, much more thematic. If you want to change the numbering style, it's the same kind of idea. You're going to go to the customize section after you selected the numbered tab. From there, you can choose the different font styles. You can change the starting number or the position of the number. You might want to change the different starting number because, again, sometimes it gets a little bit finicky with Microsoft Word and it doesn't remember the list that you left off on. And you might want to start at 0 even or all the way down at 10 or whatever number you want. And this makes it very easy to, to customize your numbered style. Now that we've looked at indentation, bullet points, numberings, and spacing, Let's take a look at the different views. In Microsoft Word, you can select a number of different views, five of them to be exact, from normal to web layout to print layout to outline to reading layout. The normal view is, is when you are just going to use text only. You're not going to use graphic images. This is, in a lot of cases, the default view of Microsoft Word. The web layout is great for when you are creating a page for the World Wide Web. In this view, you can see the background. You, the text is wrapped to the window and images appear as they would online. Print layout is probably my favorite because this is what you see when you contain things like images, headers and footers, columns, and all sorts of these different items in the Microsoft Word document. And all this will be visible, exactly how it would look if it was printed out. Outline layout or view displays the document as an outline this is useful when you're moving whole sections of your report or of the document or creating an outline for the document reading layout is when you are reading a document online it displays two pages on the screen at once so you don't need to scroll down you can read the whole document all at once to change the document view it's very very simple Go to the view on the menu bar, and then you can select normal, web, print layout, reading layout, or outline. Or there is the icons on the bottom left hand side of your screen. Each of those little icons represent a different view. From the normal layout, which are those four bars, to the web layout, which is the square with the circle, to the print layout, which is just that looks like a B almost, for the reading layout, which looks like an open book, to the outline layout, what you can see it looks like bulleted points or indentation. Each of those icons makes sense. They refer to the type of view that you are going to look at on your document. Next up is find and replace. Are you looking for something in your document? Well, if you are, then use this little handy tool. Find and replace allows you to search through a document and find various words and replace them with other words. Again, this is great if you've misspelled something regularly throughout the document, but spell check won't pick it up. So to replace simple text, go to edit and click on replace. On the replace tab, click that. And in the box, you can type in the text you want to replace for your document with the replace with. Click on replace all to replace every single time that text appears. Click OK and then click close. 
For more advanced features under the Replace tool, click on the More. Then select the desired search options and replace or replace all. Again, play around with this. You can see what you can do with finding and replacing various forms of text. The last part of this is help. Now, I'm not asking for help, although I probably need a whole lot of help, but help is a great little tool in Microsoft Word because it allows you to find out all about the various features in Microsoft Word. So whenever you need to find information on using Microsoft Word, select Help and then Microsoft Work Help. Enter what you're looking for in the search for box. Click on the green arrow, which is basically the search command. And then from the search results, you can click on the topic of interest. Now, this is great because if you're never fully sure about how to do something or you're stuck trying to figure it out, use this help feature. It can help you along the way in creating all sorts of different documents. So that brings us to the end of this presentation. So think about this. When would you use all these different features from indentation to spacing to views to bullet points and numbering to find and replace to help? Think about all the different scenarios. Make sure your notes are in order. And that's it. That's all. It's everything. We'll see you tomorrow.